Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Newsflash, there is no team called Team No Days Off, and I'm going to talk to you today about why rest days are mega important for you to get the most results. So, I think I have a total of seven points for you today. Point number one is to define what a rest day is. Here's the definition as I use it, and we'll be using it throughout the rest of this lecture. A rest day is a day on which no weight training occurs. For the purposes of most of the people watching this channel, who weight training is kind of their sport, it's their hobby, it's their activity. Some cardio is okay. If it's easy cardio, if it's just activity and getting your 10 to 12K steps a day, that's totally cool. Still counts as a rest day. Extra cardio is not a good idea and it doesn't make that day count as a rest day anymore, but we'll get to that in just a second. Now, I'm a big fan of rest days. I think they're important. I think that training seven days a week is generally fucking stupid and you should do at least one day off. Why? So that leads us to point number two of what are the actual advantages of rest days? What are the benefits? First, your muscles do not grow in the gym. They grow outside of the gym. Taking an extra day after a crazy hard week of training is a day entirely dedicated to muscle growth. That sounds pretty good to me. Just on paper, it sounds fucking sweet. Second, there are two types of fatigue that your muscles and your training can take on. One is local fatigue, like your biceps are sore. Two is systemic fatigue. Your whole body and brain are a little bit fucked up and they need to cool that system off and drop the fatigue. When you train biceps one day and the next day you train chest and triceps and the day after you train legs, your biceps locally are healing the entire time you're doing chest and triceps and legs because they're not being fussed with. Perfect. But what about the system? Your whole body sure as shit isn't healing because it's being demanded to work very hard on both when you train your biceps and your back, chest and triceps, and legs. It's just boom, boom, boom. So taking a rest day is a unique kind of fatigue reduction because it brings down systemic fatigue, that global fatigue that feels like, oh man, fuck, I never want to train again when it's high enough. And when it's low enough, feels like Dragon Ball Z lightning bolt energy flowing through your body and you're just ready to go crush the gym. You want to feel like that second way, you're going to want to bring your fatigue down, which means you're going to want to take rest days. Next, psychological fatigue reduction. That lightning bolt feeling is physiological in nature, but there is a whole other spectrum on the, on the psychology, and the psychology is affected by two things. One, physiology affects psychology. When your cortisol stress hormones, your fight or flight hormones are up and your testosterone is down from too many days without rest, too much systemic fatigue, just those hormones alone and other nervous system processes on the physiology side actually make your brain think differently and alter your psychology directly. That's definitely a thing that happens. But there is another side of psychology, the purely psychological side. That reveals itself by the fact that going to the gym and going and really, really trying, sit on a toilet and try just as hard, eat more fiber, people. It's 2023 or four or five. Whatever the fuck this video comes out. It's got the video guy. Why don't we just do like a video dump of 500 videos that we record in advance all in one day? One every minute. At least one every minute. Ooh, see if you can keep up. So psychological fatigue is something that can accumulate when the grind of having to try hard all the time is just like, oh my God, I need a mental break. Because a mental break is awesome. You're relaxing, you're recovering for a day, maybe two of pure rest. But then at the end of that second day, you're like, bro. I don't need to relax anymore. I need to shoot energy waves out of my fucking hands and then back to the gym you go. So time for muscles to grow, systemic fatigue goes down, and psychological fatigue goes down, which is all lame and whatever. It's pussy bullshit to fucking think about fatigue. But to think about it another way, you're preparing your body and mind to go psychotically hard that next week. So you go hard, 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 and you accumulate fatigue throughout the week. You take one, two, or three rest days at the end of the week, and the fatigue comes right back down so you can fucking reload the cannons of gains, brothers and sisters, and, you know, properly cite them, of course. That's the good technique part. And then, boom, fire off for a whole week straight 
get really tired, and repeat the process over again. I believe in The Lion King, they call this the circle of life. The Lion King was a movie about training, right, Scott, the video guy? That's what I got out of it. Bro, for real, and like mandrels and shit like that. I don't want to get in the motherfucker faces untrained, you feel me? Have all that r- the red ass, you know? I don't know where, where we got with that one. They do have red asses, though, fellas. You feel me? I ain't lying. All right. What do you want to avoid on rest days? You go, okay, fine, Dr. Mike. You talked me into rest. I'm a fucking bitch like you now. I need to rest all the time, not a warrior android. How do I rest properly, and what do I want to make sure that I avoid in screwing up my rest day? A couple things. One, doing more cardio or more mental work like your job or your school than usual to make up for the fact that you're not actually training with weights really hard. People do this, and I totally understand where they're coming from. You fucking grind every day. You do some fucking work. You do some fucking school. You do some fucking hard training. You feel like you've earned it. You go to sleep with a smile on your face. You guys like that? That's my 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 uh, fake Russian smile. Technically, the Russian smile looks like this. So we have nothing to be happy about. But a fake Russian smile is that your eyes stay the same, but your mouth moves. Look at my eyes. I don't know any happiness. In any case, you smile, you go to sleep, you wake up, repeat. I love it. Hashtag work hard, hashtag play hard. Dope. Makes for a great Instagram story. But some days of all the stuff you do, you need to bring it down. Because recovery occurs when you're under less total stress of every kind. Because remember, there's a psychological impact to recovery. So if you do more work and more school, you'll just be delirious from that. You'll be very accomplished in the short term. Congratulations. But your fatigue will continue to summate over the many weeks, and then you'll fucking fall apart into pieces and have to pull back on training and all this other bullshit. Instead, be smart. When you take a recovery day, try to make sure that at least a few other parts of your life are on easier mode as well. Don't make up for it, even if it's just going to work like normal. Just normally you go to work, you get out of five, you go to the gym from five to seven, you grind at the gym, you come home and you, I don't know, look up hentai. That's what I do. Oh, hey, Scott, shut the fuck up. I know you're able to attract actual females. You don't need to look at adult films, but some of us, we're lonely. And the Japanese waifus make it so nice. Am I saying that right, fellas? You hit me up in the comments. In any case, If you instead go, you know what? My waifu waifu will be 7 p.m. anyway, but I'm not going to the gym today because it's a rest day. I'm going to stay at work for two more hours. Your boss will love you. Your landlord will love you. Any proper Zeppelin owning billionaire, trillionaire like myself will love you, but you're not actually recovering as much as you could because instead of actually recovering, you took the training and the physical stress of it, and sometimes the psychological de-stress of training, and you put in more psychological stress at work. So I'd say don't have to take the whole day off of work, although that's pretty cool to do, if, especially if it's a weekend, that's really good because that'll bring down even more fatigue. But even if you just go to work and leave at the normal time, those two extra hours because you're not training, just go home and, well, I suppose get into the hentai early and then just sit there because you have nothing else to do or no friends, not even any hope of making any. This is an autobiography. Icing and heating. People think recovery and they get into all this voodoo nonsense. Ice and heat do not actually help heal you. They prevent to some extent or delay to some extent the very recuperative processes that in the short term make you tighter and more sore, but in the long term make you more jacked and all this other great stuff. So icing and heating is cool for athletes to use the day before the morning of a game so they never feel tight to begin with from all the practice or the game they had the other night. But for all of us who are gym monkeys, I shall call us, we are cool with being tight and sore and letting those inflammatory processes mediated by the immune system actually heal us and make us more jacked. So don't go over there and start doing fucking cryotherapy and heating and shit. The exception is if one of those things really psychologically relaxes you. If you're strange and you're from Northern Europe and you go into the Finnish sauna because that's the only sauna that's really work and the Swedes, they don't know what they're doing. Now, you notice my Finnish and Swedish accent is the same because to my untrained, stupid American ears, they are the same. Can you tell someone from Indiana apart from someone from Missouri? Well, those states are further apart than Finland and Sweden, motherfuckers. In any case, my uh, digressions into verbally assaulting the Northern Europeans are just better than us at everything. Uh, aside, 
if you love the sauna and it's super relaxing for you, amazing thing to do on a recovery day. But if you're in the sauna like I am and you're like, I'm going to die of fucking heat stroke in here. Why the fuck am I here? At least there's naked dudes. I've got to scratch my knee. Sorry. To look at. And they're nice. They're naked. They're dudes. This checks both of my boxes. Unless that is something that turns you on, just don't go. So remember, heat and ice at a physiological level doesn't do dick for you that you need on a recovery day. So if you're doing a recovery day, if you're doing, sorry, if you're doing a rest day and a recovery day, we'll get to what that means in a second. You don't need all that shit. Just be easy, sit on the couch, take walks, eat food, etc. And what I would stay away from, not as a matter of course, not as a matter of principle, but I suppose if you're very serious about your training, ultra serious, and this training cycle is super important to you, maybe you have a competition coming up or something like that. I would consider avoiding activities that are fun, but not relaxing and restful and easy. You know, 50 Cent can be in the club and still be jacked, but the rest of us are mere mortals and not like 50 Cent. By the way, my dog shit 50 Cent impression is incoming. And when I do it, it's probably going to suck, but it's not the worst 50 Cent impression in the world. And I got to tell you, how do I sound like 50? Well, fuck it. I'll just, I'll just do impression. Ready? <laughs> Scott Video Guy, you ready? Buy me in the club, bottle full of bug, my knee and then make love and then mess suck and anyway, that's what he sounds like. Really, really good. Pretty good. How do I do it? 50 Cent never opens his mouth because he had a shit wired shut. I don't even understand how I talk. So if you're gonna do a 50 Cent impression, my wise words to you, just keep your teeth closed the whole time and you're well on your way. You're about halfway there. So yes, it's fun to go to the club and to grind on everyone. I'm talking about fine ass bitches. I'm talking about bitches that look pretty fucking good. I'm talking about bitches that everybody needs love. I'm talking about the bitches that didn't even know they needed love with consent. I'm talking about dudes. Listen, it's 2023. Whatever you're into. It doesn't matter who you're grinding on. You're moving your hips up and down. You're grooving to the music. I'm Jewish, so my, I have an inability to dance or even understand how dance would work in a muscular coordinated manner, but I assume it's difficult. And the difficulty of that makes you sweat, makes you sore, makes you tired. Don't do it if you're very serious in that training phase. So a rest day means, and I know this sounds crazy, rest. Strange. All right, Dr. Mike, if that's even your real title. You told me what not to do, but what are some tips of what to do on a rest day? Well, easy there, kind viewer. A couple of tips. First, get as much sleep as you feel like. Like If you feel like sleeping for 10 hours, rock on. Sleep is amazing. It is recuperative. It's more powerful than any steroid in the book. Next, eat as much as your diet allows, which means if you're on a mass gaining plan and you're a lot of 500 calorie surplus, you better be taking that shit. If you're on a fat loss phase, You can't eat a ton. Well, eat as much as you can. Definitely don't skimp on the shit. A common question that I get is, look, if I have times when I have training days and other days which are rest, but my Renaissance periodization diet from the RP Diet Coach app available in the uh, Apple Store and your Google Play Store, mm -hmm, and it's for money too. And my butlers, they like money. It takes my rest days And it lowers the calories, but it keeps my training days with higher calories. Is that okay? It is totally okay. But an advanced tip is if you're training hard, you're training six days a week, maybe even five days a week on some occasion, twice a day on some of those days, it's a really, really good idea for you to think about elevating your off day calories, especially on a bulk to the same as your training day calories, because then you get some extra calories in the mix and you really, really, really allow for that recovery. Because some people, when they're not training, they'll take the calories and drop them like crazy. That's okay if you want to lose fat, but if you're just eating some proteins and trace fats on your rest day, Yes, you're resting, but you're not recovering as much as you could. So it's a real good idea to maximize calories. If you train a ton, a ton, like 
five, six plus times per week with two a days. Yeah. On your rest day, like I train six days a week, my rest day has as many calories as any other training day that I do because I'm beat up and I need that shit. Lastly, try to do as much relaxing stuff as you can. Watch Netflix. Great idea. Hang out with friends, chilling, not a ton of crazy movement. Don't go running around the park or anything like that. If it relaxes you, massage is a great idea. New room massage is an even better idea. Do you guys know what new room massage is? Do not Google it at your work computer. Scott, why are you giggling? I was going to say some shit that's private, Scott, but one of our friends who's not here, I was, you know what I'm saying? I was going to talk that shit, but I shouldn't, right? We maybe knew someone who might have gotten one. I've heard of people that I've known who've gotten new room massages. A new room massage is just like any old fashioned massage you see, except the person that's doing it to you is female of reproductive age and appearance, entirely naked and completely lathered head to toe in massage oil. And she uses both her hands and the rest of her body to massage you. And I believe all of those massages really just kind of end in one way with a happy customer that is. Give it a shot. It's probably dope. But what would I know? I've just seen a few people on the internet do it and websites you're not allowed to type in at work. For real, for real though, compassionate touching, cuddling all the way up to, etc. Somewhere in there is just regular massage. Has a very big effect on reducing fatigue. Huge effect. So if you can get some cuddles in, That's a really good idea. So find you someone you can cuddle with and no joke. Petting and cuddling with pets has a profound, measurable, relaxing effect on most humans, at least the humans that like to do it. So if you have a kitty cat or a little bull doggy, this is me playing with their flaps. You move the flaps. Uh, Then that's actually uh, helpful for recovery. So you can pick up your bulldog and set him on your lap and he's like, Mm-hmm. And you're like, who, who my big man helped me recover? Who's the big man? And they don't ever say anything back. Um, but that's how baby talk works to pets, which I do in every conceivable moment. And if you ever meet me in real life and you have a pet on you, I will absolutely do baby talk to it. Now, that's rest days. But there's another kind of day I wanted to talk to you guys about, which is related. There's a rest day where you don't fucking train. And then there is a recovery training day. You do train on that day, but it's recovery style training, training whose purpose is not generally to elevate your fitness characteristics, to make you better at stuff directly, training that has the purpose of increasing your ability to recover. It potentiates further recovery. Generally speaking, while there are many different ways to skin the cat, you guys ever think about how that actually looks? It's fucked up. The template I like to start with as a thought exercise, at least with recovery days, is to take 50% of the load, 50% of the weight off the bar, only do 50% of the reps you normally do, half the reps, and only half of the sets as usual. If you think about it, someone who's benching 200 pounds for four sets of 10 is now doing two sets of five with 100 pounds. Holy fucking shit. That is so much easier. It's so easy, in fact, that it just barely potentiates through blood flow and stretching and moving and activating the nervous system. It barely potentiates. It's like a mini rehab, mini physical therapy, just a little bit of a dose of exercise to super boost the recovery process while not adding any fatigue and actually subtracting. So the biggest quintessential critical thing for recovery training is for it to be very, very easy. If it is remotely difficult, it's a bad idea. You should be resting instead. Recovery days do, uh, recovery training does a couple of really cool things. During multi-day rest periods, if you rest generally for more than about two or three days, your body actually starts to recover slower because your metabolism is like, fuck that. I guess we're done with sport. If you do a little bit of light movement and training during a 
three to four day rest period, you can actually have better, faster, and more complete recovery. In addition, just that minor workload and moving through, going through the motions can save a little tiny fraction of muscle from going away. These are tiny fractions, but over months and years of training, they can add up. And because you're still training with the exercises during recovery training, and because the exercises are so easy, very far from failure, very low, much lower reps, many fewer sets, much less load, you're actually able to focus on technique meticulously. So recovery training still take your technique very seriously. And then it's an extra opportunity to improve your technique while your fatigue comes down. Very, very, very cool. When should you use these? A couple, there's, there are more situations that I'm going to list, but I'm going to list probably about 95% of all the situation fall into, I think, basically three things. One, When you otherwise have multiple, and in this, I mean three or more days off in a row. So if you take a recovery half week, you take a deload, you take an active rest, well, yeah, all the training days on those are recovery training days, roughly half of everything and super easy. If you are just taking two days off from the gym, don't take your second day and go in there and do stuff. If it's one day off, don't you dare go to the fucking gym. If it's three day off, 50-50. Maybe the middle day, that second day, you can go and do recovery training. But if it's four, five, six days off, yeah, you should probably get your ass in there and do one or two recovery training sessions. That's a good idea. Next, it's a really big advantage these kinds of days when technique optimization is a big factor. For hypertrophy trainees, such as, well, maybe you and definitely me, it's not a big deal. Hypertrophy technique's not that complicated. Also, you get a shitload of practice because you're doing tons of sets and reps all the fucking time. But if you are a weightlifter or a powerlifter, or if you're into S&M, which means strongman, then you have an opportunity to do all the events and lift very light and maybe even for a little bit of speed and that promotes recovery and it improves your technique. So to a bodybuilder, if given the chance between a recovery day and just a day off, many times they'll just take the day off because they don't have a lot of rest days to begin with anyway. And because technique doesn't matter much. So one of the upsides is a little bit not as big of a deal. But for people who are powerlifters, weightlifters, or strongman competitors, or just recreational strength people, strong man and strong woman, I think women just still call the sport strongman. It's a bit of an archaic term. If that's the case, man, recovery training is actually fucking great because it drops your fatigue so you can get crazy heavy training after, but also makes you more technical. So that when you go to that crazy heavy training, you're even more fluid and everything's really good. And lastly, You can use these when you are taking away pre-planned hard training days and replacing them with recovery training days. If you had just rest days planned, like you plan two rest days, and on the second day you're like, man, I want to go to the fucking gym. I didn't have any fucking thing planned here and I'm not supposed to be at the gym. Fuck it. I'll go do a recovery training session. That's not the worst thing in the world, but it's kind of fucking stupid because you really two or three days in a row, just rest and let the body relax. The utility of a recovery training session doesn't really show itself until you do rest for a couple of days. That's when it really makes a big difference. And if you're layering in more training than you're supposed to be, if you're supposed to train five days a week, but now you're adding an extra recovery training session on that sixth day. To quote Dr. James Hoffman, one of the world's experts in recovery training and RP coach, you do not recover by adding shit. So if your sixth day was supposed to be hard, but you're like way too fucked up to do it, replacing it with a recovery training, great idea. Five days was the plan. Six was supposed to be rest, but you're like, man, fuck rest. I'll sleep when I'm dead, brother. Dope. But you're going to be dead real soon because if you go and do recovery training, it's just probably a waste of your time at best. And at worst, it actually marginally adds fatigue because of the psychological fatigue of going to the gym and experiencing all that bullshit. Otherwise, outside of the circumstances, probably take a rest day. Now, there is a feature to this discussion more advanced of timing your rest days. Generally speaking, if you're training for hypertrophy and strength, you're going to take somewhere between one and three total rest days per week, which is if you train four days a week, you take three rest days, five days a week, you take two, six days a week, you take one, seven days a week of training is not a serious approach to training. If you're a hardcore athlete, you want the best possible results, you should be training at most six days a week. I really do think that. 
Because again, this whole fucking lecture about how rest days are important. So you need at least once per week. When you're constructing your plan, let's say you train five days per week, you have a choice. You can either intersperse your rest days or you can take them contiguously, which means they line up or adjacently one, one up to another. So you could do Monday, Tuesday, rest, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, rest, and then come back. Or you could do Monday through Friday training and then Saturday, Sunday, rest, contiguous, adjacent days, and then Monday back to training. By a small margin, I think most of the time, and I mean like 60, 40, contiguous training days, sorry, uh, definitely training days, contiguous adjacent rest days, if you have more than one, are usually a good idea, at least two in a row at one point during your week. You can drop a lot of fatigue in one day, you really can, with a great night of sleep, but two rest days in a row get you jazzed the fuck up for psycho training like none other. There's something special to that. And if you're a bodybuilder, hypertrophy is not that hard. You might be able to do just one rest day or not even do the contiguous ones, maybe five days a week, but you split it up, no big deal. But you're a strength athlete. You're a strong man. You're a power lifter. I highly recommend taking two days off in a row. It can be a game changer. At least try it and see how you feel. Now, within all that context, whether or not you do the contiguous days, there are a few timing options you can choose from, and they both have their upsides and downsides. One intelligent way to take a rest day, let's say you're a bodybuilder, is before your big priority day or days. Let's say that you have two rest days a week. And this mesocycle, fuck, this whole training block, three mesocycles in a row, like, gee, four to six months of training, you want big back gains. You were at the club and you were like, hey, I noticed you from across the room. But she's like, up, 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 up. I'm going to cut you off. She had my exact tone of voice. She's like, when you came over here, I thought you were fucking hot. But then you turned around to look back at your friends and I noticed you have the back of what looks to be a literal vagina. And I'm not interested in you talking to me. When you come back to me, when you buy the fucking meat on your goddamn spine and then she takes a shot, <sighs> And fucks off. You're like, first of all, that bitch was Russian for sure. Second of all, damn, her voice is weird. But she was so, so hot. She had these horns on her head from growth hormone abuse. Are they still there, Scott? Yes. I love them. You need a big back. You're like, fuck that. I'm never getting dissed at the club like that. I'd have fucking knocked a motherfucker out. My own hit women. But I also I can't knock her out because my back's not big enough. What are you going to do? We got two rest days a week. A smart thing to do is to take your rest days before your big two back training sessions of that week. Tuesday, you train back. Friday, you train back. Odd, but Monday and Thursday are your rest days, which means that you show up Tuesday and Friday for back training. You can't fucking wait to rip the bar into pieces. You're fed, you're rested, and you're going to put every fucking ounce of pain and brutality and embarrassment and just never having become the person you were supposed to be is. That fucking worked out for me. <laughs> and I'm going to take all that shit and I'm going to put it in the goddamn weights. Very good idea. Another compelling idea also exists. Instead of taking the rest days before your training to gear up for it, take the most important training for you in that mesocycle, cycle, which is in your case because you got dissed at the club, the back. And put it, put the rest days after the back training. You get in the gym, tired, not tired, grind. But then you get a day off after. And what do you do during the day? You fucking rest and you sleep and you relax and you eat. What happens to your back? It grows and grows and grows because you will not see higher growth rates in any muscle in any time during the week other than the time directly after training and especially that day after. That's when you get a ton of growth. You might as well line it up because if you do another workout that day, there is some interference. It could not be large, but it will absolutely be interference. So if you're really serious about bringing up some kind of muscle group that you've been uh, offended about at the club by a female Russian-speaking woman, then either taking a rest days 
or rest day before that big priority muscle group or after, they're both fine options. Ideally, you would take before and after, but then you're training like twice a week and that doesn't make any fucking sense. Lastly, there is another compelling case where you take your off days on weekends. Why? Because weekends generally for all of life stress, work, school, your parole officer keeps calling you, shit in my life that I have to deal with. On the weekends, it happens less. So the weekends are already a low stress time. Why not maximize the fuck out of that by taking those as rest days? You're working like a dog Monday through Friday anyway. So if Thursday's your rest day, you're at fucking work. The boss is yelling at you. You're at school. Your professor's yelling at you. Show up to your parole officer. She's yelling at you. And then she's like, have you been a bad boy? She's got handcuffs. This is pretty dope. Scott, the video guy, when you were on parole for that one crime, series of crimes, crime spree that we won't talk about, did you ever get s and by your female parole officer? I don't have you with her baton a lot. Oh, I see. You're like, look, I'm not into the seduction part. I'm into paint. Just beat me with your baton mercilessly. She's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Having fun? You're like, yes. In any case, that's gross. Folks, this is a family channel, Thank okay? You, you got to ask. You know I'm saying? So weekends are awesome because they're a big cool down and they take that rest that you're trying to remember. The point of rest is to recover and they maximize your ability to recover. Concentrated loading consolidation of stressors into one part of the week, consolidation of rest into another, sports science approved. It sounds like I said a bunch of things and you're like, well, certainly I have to hit one of these if I arrange my rest days. You could not. You could say chest is really important and you train your chest Tuesday and Friday and on Monday and Thursday, you're training legs and back together and <laughs> fucking Wednesday and Saturday, you're training shoulders and arms like crazy. So, okay, well, uh, you'll just be tired on both sides for your chest. Good job. And then it turns out that you take your off days some fucking where other than that, that's not the weekend. And then so like you fucked up everything. You can totally fuck up most of this or not all of this. So if you have priority muscle groups, try to rest either before or after. And if you don't, try to rest on the weekends. No, this is minor stuff. It's not mandatory. But if you want to make a little optimal-ish kind of program, then download the RP Hypertrophy app. Link in bio. No, description. Description. I can YouTube. But for this stuff, think about your recovery to maximize it, to try to do the best as you can. And that's it. Folks. That's all I have. Go rest and come back and don't watch any of our videos until you're well rested. Uh, doctor's orders. See you then.